I am a reasonable person. Manager, I want you to give me the check today. The check. I want the money now. Well, what are you saying? You want me to write you, a check you right now? And you fire me. I have a reputation. And I have a history with well, my aunt. I don't have a not check on Larry, Larry, quiet down, will you? Listen, you tell me to be quiet. Will you just I will tell down? Diane not to work with you. Wait a second. Wait a listen, second. You'll get your check. You listen to me. Don't tell me to shut up. I don't carry checks on me. Quit. You stop that. Give me my hey, phone. Hey, you you don't so quit with a gun. Larry. Hey. Stop it. Don't. Larry. Oh, oh you do it. Larry. Mango. Oh, you're an animal. Oh, oh, oh Larry. Oh, oh. Oh. Hi, Diane. Everyone. And you are who? Who are you? I'm Jeff Garland. Oh, and I'm Susie Essman. And we're the hosts of... Um, the History uh, of Curb Your Enthusiasm. History of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And this is Episode 5, Interior Decorator. Yes. And just for those of you who don't know, these were all shot way back in the Paleolithic era in the year 2000, I believe. They were shot in 2000? Yeah. yeah I think we went to I work believe. then. Yeah. yeah. 2000. Yeah. So we, we open with... <laughs> Larry's theme of life, no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, but it's it's just the innocence of him going into an elevator. Someone asks to stop, which is the proper behavior, is to hold the door open for them. And he goes into the, 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 doctor's, the, office. the doctor's office. He yes. holds the elevator for Marissa Jarrett Winokur. Yes, who, by the way been a dear friend of mine ever since and i don't know if we cast her we cast her for the show by we i mean marla and i oh i see we we used to cast the show without the casting director at, knowing the, it. at the time it was she in hairspray or yeah, no no here's how much she hadn't accomplished anything yet except for being a nice human being which i think is a and great talented. Accomplishment. very talented no i'm sitting at lunch she said to me do you want to hear this tape I have? I think we're going to do Hairspray on Broadway. Because she was workshopping it. Mm -hmm. She was workshopping Hairspray. And she played it for me. I go, oh, that sounds great. Little I know, she'd win a Tony. Yeah. She yeah. won a Tony and for this. And interestingly, uh, that was written by Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman. Right. And I, went, I saw Friday night, I saw a preview of uh, Some Like It Hot, which they also wrote, which I thought was terrific. Oh, I'm completely confused. They, there's a musical now. Of Here some, in town? Yes, in New York. Oh, okay. Of Some Like It Hot. Wow. And I went to see the preview on Friday, and I thought it was terrific. And oh, I was, by the way. I was suspect because, you know, you're making a musical no, come on, of, Billy Wilder movie. It's classic. Uh, Billy Wilder, Marilyn Monroe, Tony yeah, Curtis, Jack yeah, Lemmon, you yeah. know. But they really updated it, and I thought they did a great job. Right. And the music is, is gorgeous because he's so talented. Did you have a snack in the lobby at an intermission? I didn't. But Mark Did Shaman, you, you know, as a composer, is He's great. way up there. Boy. I remember from Scott Broadcast too. News singing so, the news theme. So that which was you have Marissa. No, in. no I you do. Know, what, okay, you brought up Mark Shaman. I didn't. You didn't let me finish. But go ahead, Marissa Winokur. What do you have to say? So she, so she gets in the elevator with Larry, and you, you know it's not going to be pretty. No. The minute she gets but, in. <laughs> but the fact that she signs in before him, and he's a bit frustrated, the minutiae of life is that life is truly unfair, but also, I'll use this word, it's stupid. Life is stupid. It's just that things happen and you go, that is ridiculous. Forget the unfair. It's unfair to everyone all the time. Sometimes you get a break, sometimes you don't. But this is the minutia of stupid. It's just stupid. The fact you mean the fact that she signed in before him, the fact, and then and what then gets what to go inside before him. Yes, yes, yes. And 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 I love that Larry can't sign his name because of his finger, yeah, and they yeah. call him Mister Dobbs, which reminds yeah. me of that scene in Take the Money and Run, right? Where he's robbing the, the bank, bank, yeah. And they're like, "Gub, I have a gub." You yeah, know that kind of saying, that kind of thing makes me uh, laugh. By the way, um, I love Lisa Ann Walter. By the way, Play, plays the, the receptionist, receptionist, and she is. A big bowl of fantastic. Yes. Lisa Ann Walter, who I love. Yeah. Um, the best line that I think of the episode is... Please don't talk to her. She's busy. Because he starts to talk to yes, the other person. The other and goes, Please don't talk to her. She's busy. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, another line that I loved is when Larry says, "What is it, what is it like a bakery? You, you pick you pick a number and the first number yes, goes. Yes, basically it's first come first serve. So why don't you, why don't you just have a little like. ticket? We can all take numbers instead well, of even why do you even give out the appointments? You don't even sir, need appointments. So this is another example of just you know all the injustices also, of life. There was a, a mistake made. Oh no, not in this scene. My mistake. But I do love." Uh, 
Larry talking to the extra to the other to the other yeah, patients. Like, like, don't you? By the way, the number of times that has happened to me where some injustice has happened, usually minor, the major people would speak up, but a minor injustice that should affect them, and I'll start talking to everyone, and, they and say I get nothing. nothing. Get, get nothing. nothing. People but don't want to get involved. What's funny with this is though, he's talking to extras, so they're gonna say nothing. They have Actively, to. Uh, they're not allowed yeah. to say anything, but they just stare at him. And uh, it's just, you know, it's it's the indignity. It's all the right. indignities just put upon him. I love that, him lecturing other patients. Uh, he was a gentleman, and he let, you know, all of that. And then he confronts the doctor, Jack Gallagher, who Jack has Gallagher. played the doctor in several Episode. seasons. But I'm surprised he still doesn't. I think it just fell between the cracks at one time where they hired another doctor because he's had 40 different doctors since then. Yeah. And, and Jack Gallagher, Jack Gallagher, who... Um, a stand-up comedian yeah. for many years. I did a uh, series with him uh, called Bringing Up Jack, I think was that. I don't remember. But he was the star of it, and I was his sidekick. It, was it like a pilot or a series? No, it was a series oh. for ABC, and they dumped it off in the summer. And he was wonderful. Right away, you know you know a show is doomed, and basically because of the network or producers. This guy, vibrant. Jack, Young. you're talking yes. about, yeah. Always has had gray hair since his 20s. Mm -hmm. He does the show. After it's all been signed and done and we're doing it, their first request was we want him to color his hair. Mm -hmm. And they colored it jet black. They're basically saying we want the show to fail. Right, right. So can we take something that is inherent in the lead character and change it? And you would have thought if they if they wanted that, they would have said something ahead of time. By the way, if I ever write an autobiography of my time in Hollywood, it's going to be called You'd Think. You'd Think. You'd Think. You'd Think, yeah. yeah. And by the way, Jack is a great listener for a comedian. Not time, all times comedians are great listeners. He's a great listener. So any time that Larry says anything... Jack uh, agrees with it, or how, I forget the word. Well, the, he, he, he doesn't deny him. Yes, he, and. Yeah, yes, and. Which is an improv but technique. He doesn't yes, and to take it to another level. He, he yes, ands for Larry to do his shtick. You know, he stays in the scene. He stays in the he scene. He stays in the scene, and, and that's says, what a good improviser does, oh, well, is he was, listen he and stay so in the scene. He was so wonderful. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to check and see if our new season, if there's a doctor. There's always a doctor, Jeff. I'm going to see Let's if there's see. a new one, and, <laughs> and I'm going to try and get Jack The Black. other doctor that I love, we'll get to him when, uh, what's the his, shoes? he just died. What's his name? No, not the orthotics. The um, No. Yeah, and it was his neighbor, and he goes to his no, house. No, 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 no. No. Uh, oh. No, character actor. He was in He's in Paul Thomas Anderson's first yes, movie. Yes, yes, yes. I know. And, Such a great actor. And he was on Curve. And he just I mean, died he's recently. on the Goldbergs, too. I know. Oh, Philip Baker Hall. Philip Baker Hall. A remarkable actor. Yeah. And we'll get to him when we get to his episode. But, yeah, but, but he I mean, was a remarkable actor. We've had actor. great, great actors. I was actors. in awe. By the way, sometimes I work with somebody who's not a star, but I'm in awe of him. I was in awe of Philip Baker yeah. Hall. Well, he was an example of a working character actor who worked all the time. But who was great. Who was great, There are working course. character actors. He, but was, he the was the S.J. Sakal of his generation. I don't know what S.J. Sakal. Oh, yes, you do Cuddles, who played in, from Casablanca. Oh, I know that guy. Okay, see, I don't know. I, I know most of the names from old movies. So, By the way, can I also make just one quick comment? I'm looking now, look at the way I write. And look at the way you write on our notes. Yeah. Her notes like look like a beautiful letter that she might write to a president. Uh, you know, handwriting, cursive, obviously. Mine is printed. It's chaos, which is, that's your brain. This is my this brain. Is my also, brain is chaos. It's also part of my learning disability because I have all kinds of problems. So I have to I have to do it neatly. Otherwise, I can't know what it is. And this is part of my learning, learning disability, disability and putting no effort into <laughs> do it. Do you think that all comics have some form of learning disability? I think that all comics are fucked <laughs> one way or another you know i used to think when i first started comedy because they always talked about what trauma are you and i was like my childhood was beautiful which it was but i'm just a traumatic individual it's just trauma follows me right and left you, you know what uh, jeff you could have a beautiful childhood and yet there can be trauma nobody has a perfect childhood yeah. things happen and as a child you're so vulnerable and yeah. you know so larry confronts the doctor about the policy yeah. is it whose appointment is first or is it who signs in first 
or any combination thereof. And this this whole confrontation and the fact that he's late and that Mar- Marissa Jarrett Winokur went before him and took so long causes him to be late for his appointment with Diane Keaton, who is going to do his but wait, script. wait, he accosts Marissa as she's leaving. What's going? What, what was going on in there? What were you chatting? Talking about old times? What was that? <laughs> I think that's what the thing that killed me. Were you chatting? You know, no one should do that, even if they've been that. That's actually scary. Well, she's rude. Yeah. Uh, okay. Not her personally. But, yeah. but and also, you know, it, there's so many things that I'm watching that are signs of the times. Like now, to get a doctor to spend more than 10 minutes with you. Right. It's a different time. By the way, here's what I wrote down, because I, I realized that it never happens. I wrote down, never happens. Larry and Marissa twice enter the office and they're they're called in. One's called in right away. Larry's not called in right away. But there's a bunch of extras. But we would never make that mistake now. But the assumption I made was, because this does frequently happen, there's another doctor in that office complex. Uh, Bob Shivago. Exactly. Yeah, Dr. Shivago. That does but, happen. But by the way, look at you for justifying, and I did not see that. I was closed-minded. I thought of it, but I, yeah. I, it occurred to me. I was like, yeah, why aren't these other people partners. going yes, in? Yes, yes. Whatever. Okay. So the doctor tells him that his wife, who happens to be Larry's lawyer, read his script. And then this is another pet peeve. Oh, my wife read the script. Silence. Oh, no, no, forget even script. Uh, so-and-so saw your show. Silence. Nothing. By the way, I've had people come backstage after I perform. Nothing. 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 No, no, big bowl of nothing. Yeah. And, no, uh, I, and by the way, that happens to me all the time now. That's not, a, I had actually someone relatively close to me come with me, come with me to my gig. I perform, I think I had a great show. We're driving home. Never nothing, mentions the show. Nothing. Doesn't even mention that he would just came from a show. You know, my mother did that to me. Oh. When I did Last of the Red Hot Lovers at Williamstown, right. and that was live theater, and she came to the show, and then we drove back to my house when I had a house upstate, like an hour drive, did not say one word. By the way, big bowl of trauma. Yeah. That's all I'm saying to you. That yeah. is just so... So he doesn't say whether she liked the script. Yeah, she read the script, and Larry's nonplussed. Right. And then he leaves, and he doesn't have money for the garage. Right. Here's an interesting thing. Becca asked me, did someone rob Larry's wallet? He looks so confused as to how he didn't have cash. This tells me she's a New York girl because rich people don't carry cash. <laughs> Even before the whole phone scanning thing, a couple things I want to say. First off, that is based in reality. I have been to with Larry David at Valet Parking, us getting our cars at the same time at least 20 times. I have paid every time, not out of generosity, but out of, oh, he doesn't I don't have, have cash. It. <laughs> yes. Now, the other thing that's interesting, the young lady who plays the woman at the, who Oh, Joanna. Her. Yeah. The attendant. Yeah, the attendant. Yes, she's very funny. Okay, but here's the thing. I, I knew her. She talked with her American accent. And they gave, oh, you got to pay me. Yeah, that you know? would not fly right now. Not only would it not fly... We didn't notice it back then. Larry didn't notice it. And Larry would be the first one now yeah. to say this That was is another wrong. example of what I'm saying. When we look back and it's, it's 22 it's years ago, it's, it's a, a different, different time. world. And by the way, I learned this at the same exact time we were filming this or right after. I, no, it was a few years after. But I filmed a movie called I Want Someone to Eat Cheese With. And in the first draft, there was... An Asian character. I don't know if it even made the movie. I can't remember the movie that I made. Uh, so that really prompts none of you to watch it. Although I do think it's flawed, but very charming. What the movie's ad- adorable. It, it it's is a very, very charming. Sweet movie. Yeah. Roger Ebert said a must see. Okay, it's a very uh, three star movie. movie or a must see two. I don't remember. All right. Anyhow, I wrote the part and I wrote on paper because that's how I write it longhand. The stupid accent of a Chinese person. Uh, and a friend of mine, Susie Nakamura, said, that's not good. And this is before what we're living but, with but now. But let me, let me ask a question about that. And I was embarrassed Let's say that this it. character, yeah. that, that she was cast, the character of Joanna, the garage attendant, and she really had an accent. Great. That's not a problem. No, I'm saying if you're looking for that accent... You hire someone who, who has, has that, that accent. accent. Even though she was Asian. Right, even though she was Asian. Yeah. I, by, the, by the way, that's one step away from the step and fetch it 
times. I agree. You know, I agree. Oh, Mr. or whatever, the, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so it's a stereotype. Yeah. And it's not appropriate. Right. But we had no idea. Uh, and she was time. very funny. She is funny. And, she was and, in the ground. And so you wonder, would she have been as funny without the accent? I think probably, yes. No, I don't think probably. Yes. I know her. I saw the part. If she had spoken with a r- American accent. Yeah. She would have been just as funny. Karen Mayuma, yeah, she was in The Groundlings, really a talented actress. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I had performed with her and really thought the world of her. I, it never occurred to me where I would go. Yeah. You know, that's We demeaning. didn't have the same consciousness then. Yeah, but now we're overconscious. Uh, exactly. Well, but, so but hopefully I, then it's, it uh, comes back years, into yeah, a split yeah, the middle. You know, someone, yeah, split the difference. All right, here we go. So Larry doesn't have the money for the garage. He owes her $3. He'll give her $5. He'll pay her back on Friday. Okay. Then he co- goes to meet you. Yes. At the restaurant. Yeah. Diane left. He was supposed to meet Diane right, at the yes. restaurant. Diane left. Um, I, you know, I watched that scene, and there are two things. One's joyful, one's not joyful. Okay. The joyful part is how easy Larry and I work together. It's effortless, unequivocally, and we make each other laugh in scenes. However, I look at that and I'm disgusted. I hate looking at myself now. I can't stand looking at myself on screen Well, either. no, by the way, a lot of actors don't, yeah. but I won't go. Like, I'll go to the premiere of this movie, and but I'll work the red sit. carpet. Yeah. I will not watch the movie. I'll never see the movie. Although I do have to say, and I, I probably have said this before, Curb is the one thing that I watch. Well, I have to watch because I'm a producer. Man, but so it's I so funny. To. It tickles me. No, no, I'm not <laughs> saying it's not, but it's the only thing I'm comfortable with. However, here, I love how easy we work together, but also, not only do I not look at look myself... But I just look at myself. I look like the Michelin man. Well, you were very overweight at that point. Very is the yeah. key word. Yeah. And not only that, but I'd had a stroke. Yeah. And I just felt so bad for the guy, me. Really super, super bad. And there was a lot of um, trauma to come for this guy. But you see, that's what you see. The audience doesn't see any of that. They see... You know, well, in the Jeff, time, the they manager. just thought I was yeah. Jeff. But if you look at that episode now or any of these first season episodes, you go, holy shit, he was fat. Yeah, yeah. I, I was actually, when I went back and looked, I was a little shocked at how fat you were. <laughs> <laughs> it is based, but you and know I'm me. And I'm glad you're not. Yeah, I'm, by the way, I am so glad I am not. Yeah. It is. It is. And you work very hard I at actually it. feel that I look the best I've ever looked now at yeah, 60. you do. Which is weird. Better than teenager, better than college. Better than any point in my life, which is weird. Well, it's how you feel. No, I feel nauseous and I feel self-loathing. So then he goes home and Cheryl comes in with her interior decorator, Carmen. Played by Rose Abdu, who I was in Second City with. And I actually just worked with Rose Abdu on Hacks. Right. I saw her in that. Yes. Yes. She plays uh, Josefina. By the way. The the housekeeper to to Deborah Vance, to um, Gene Smart's character. And she is lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely and talented. And very talented. I want someone to eat cheese with. And I, I, I know I've worked with her more. And also she did this show. Yeah, you and know. she was horrific in that yeah. part. So yeah. Carmen comes in. Earth tones are over. I love yeah. that. And Diane Keaton is also Carmen's client. Right. Now, uh, she, uh, Diane leaves a message on Larry's phone, and the phone number is garbled. And Larry asks Carmen for Diane Keaton's phone number. Carmen won't give it to him unequivocally, right. which is hilarious because Larry's right. Uh, oh, Larry's almost always right. Oh, by the way, that's the point of the show. It's almost people always living right. vicariously that's through right. him. And every once in a while, it's the, oh, no, don't do that. That's why I thought the best season, in my opinion, was the uh, Spite Store with the coffee. Because everyone has gone into that a coffee shop. Uh, oh, uh, what did I say? Did I give a number? No, I'm just, I was just yeah, thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, 10. But everyone's gone into a shop, whether it's coffee, anything. Right. Treat it like shit and goes, man, I wish I could I wish I wish could close you down. I wish anything. I'll never come back. Well, Larry's Only acting Larry, on people's fantasies. I know, but no, he's acting on his own fantasy. Well, I know, but I I'm saying for, the reason why write. people contend, uh, yeah. why, why they like it so much is he's saying what they want to say, but they can't. I know, but can't. Larry doesn't write it because of no, that. No, no. He, he writes it because that's how he feels. That's right. But the idea to come out side of a coffee shop, look at a space available and come up with the idea you're going to open the same exact store with lower prices and better things. He, of course, goes crazy with it. 
you know, so. As is his want. Is his want. But, yeah. So, so Larry says, it's not a question of loyalty. She's saying I have to be loyal to my clients. You could see that and she I just love, left her. I love that exchange. I just oh, think that exchange okay. By is the way, so hilarious. A, a little fun fact is that we were in our first season. It wasn't like we've gotten so many amazing guest stars. Diane didn't really want to do it. She's like, what's this? So she agreed to record voiceover. So in this scene, phone message, easy voiceover. But the only other scene she appears in, which we'll get to, voiceover. Voiceover. You see her ankles. Yeah. They're not her ankles. Yeah, I could tell they weren't her ankles. I hope she liked the ankles we chose. Um, and, and Larry then fires Carmen yes. over this incident. Yeah. Yes. And then he goes back to the parking lot to see his lawyer. And again, the the the, the guy, uh, uh, Oscar Nunez. Uh, so Oscar Nunez does Great not. Great character hold actor. On, does not speak that way. No. But a terrific, and you know him from The Office, probably. Yes, yes. Most and people do, a and really many other sweet things. guy who I have always loved, even when I just see him at the Groundlings. He's just the nicest yeah. man. And, and terrifically funny yeah, and, yeah. and terrific actor. Yeah. And he will not take Larry's money. Larry gives him 10, nobody wants to take his money. And then I love the next scene where Joanna, the original Asian parking attendant, Larry goes into the slow motion movement. And then he realizes who it is. Who it is. He goes, no, I didn't mean to. But I can't tell you how many times I've been in an elevator and I've thought of that slow motion, ple- By the pressing way, the door, hold I don't open. think I've ever done it, but it's been done to me. Yeah. Oh, it's been and done to me. And you could just see his face going slowly. And my, my reply on the first floor is, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I hope you're in a big rush. Okay. So now he's at the lawyer. Yeah. This is so great. The lawyer wants to charge, and it's, it's uh, uh, Nia Vardalos. Me, me, no, no, Nia Vardalos. Yeah. Uh, she, from uh, my uh, Big Fat Greek loves, Wedding. Uh, I know her for years. Yes. We also were in Second City together. Uh-huh. Terrific uh, actress uh, yeah, and writer. Uh, yeah. she, she created my Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah, this is before that. Was it before that? That's how we got her. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, actually, I, I do think that she would have done it after. But, even as, the first but season. as you said about Diane... First season was a completely different thing. Now yeah. we have, I can't tell you, every celebrity I meet begs me to be on the show. And of course, I have no power to put them on. But now everyone wants to I'm be on the show. I'm developing a new show that will allow celebrities to do what we do. And it's not a game show because it sounds like that. I'm not going to talk about right, it now. We'll talk when about it's that greenlit later. and we filmed an episode... If we're still doing, we'll probably still. But be you doing know this. that now yeah. everybody wants to be I've on the been, show. I've been asked but first season, you know no, who? Not, not even a second chance. season, you know what I mean? It was, no, no, no. It took a while. Yeah, and the lawyer wants to charge Larry fifteen hundred dollars for reading his script. Is that something they really do? Uh, I, I imagine because everything's been done, okay. Uh, but I imagine that it's not been done. When someone didn't ask you to read it, that's okay. Because really he says he didn't ask, and he doesn't want her notes. By He's not way, interested by in the way, her I notes. I believe this, and I also believe this is true. Okay, this is based on uh, truth. she's not. He's not interested in her creative input, and he fires her. Right. So that's two people he's fired already in a day. Then he goes into the underground garage, and he sees Joanna, and she confronts him. She knows the face of a liar. She's right. funny. She was yeah. very, very funny, and he gives her a twenty. So then he goes out to the garage and he owes two dollars and twenty cents. He gave he gave thirty dollars away. He right. doesn't have any more cash than thirty dollars, right. and the lawyer pulls up behind him, of course, well, of course, and yeah. is just disgusted. Yeah, well, she should be because he just fired her. Yeah, and she thinks that charging fifteen hundred dollars to read a script is is de rigueur. No, yeah, really standard practice. I believe Larry, she says. Here's the thing, though. Larry doesn't even hesitate when he doesn't have the money to go back to her car. As soon as he commits to it, he goes back and he asks her for $3. She gives him $3 and he goes, I'll give you a 10 back. Right. It'll be the best money ever. It's just, it's real because it's Larry David and the scenario. I think other people playing that role, you go, this is too absurd. Ridiculous, yeah. But I believe it from the moment he gets out of his car. Well, any, anything he gets into, you, you believe. Yeah. And now he's now he's late for a Diane meeting again. He's right. going over to Diane's house. Uh, the assistant answers the door. I, and the you, you're both, in, you both go over there. Yeah, and the house is in, I remember exactly where it is. It's, it's off Wilshire Boulevard in Hancock Park. Now, we should tell people, none of these houses are our real houses. They're, they're houses that are rented for production. Yeah, they're location So houses. people know that. Uh, what's unusual about Because I can't tell you how show. many times I've been asked, is that really your house? Well, by the <laughs> way, 
we've been on a sound stage. I would guess in all the years we've been doing it, maybe five times. Maybe five. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say. We are always on location. Yeah. You know, the only time we were on soundstage a lot was in the Seinfeld season. Well, by the way, but that was let's, even, let's even take a step. Yes. Yeah. No, that if you're on a soundstage playing a right. soundstage. Right. Like, like for I'm Young Larry. You know. I'm talking about courtroom scenes. Right, right. Like different. I'm talking about when it's not on a soundstage, it's supposed to be someplace else. Right. That's a soundstage. Maybe five, six times. So I, I don't agree. count when we're standing on a right. set. No, no, no. Okay. So the assistant has an attitude. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he says the lamp looks familiar. Yeah. Why was the lamp familiar? Was that the same lamp that he broke in Porno Gill? I don't think so. Well, that being said, maybe it was. You know what? There's a there's a callback to uh, the bracelet thing. Yes, yes. How he hurt his finger. Yes. He explains. I hurt his finger. I can count on one hand. Same with sound stages that we use for different settings. Count on one hand that we do any callbacks to previous episodes. It's like a fresh slate, unless it's the storyline yeah, of the yeah. season. Yeah, well, yeah, which was later seasons, we got more into the arcs. Than, yeah, but, than but here. even that. But, but even in the, in the next episode, there's a callback to I the have bracelet. To talk yeah, about that. yeah, we'll talk so, about that yeah. next episode. So, yeah, I don't know if that lamp looks familiar or if it's because maybe Carmen brought it to their house when she was hired as a decorator. I don't know. No, it has to be from Porno Gill. I'm just guessing. Maybe. I would guess that that's what it's from. It's a callback to Porno Gill. And for those of who like uh, continuity, look at you. You get yeah. excited. And Carmen is at Diane's house. They're waiting for Diane in her living room. And Carmen walks in and Carmen wants to get paid. And she and Larry get into a physical altercation, which ends up being eroticized. Well, yeah. Uh, by the way, <laughs> was that in the, Was that in the outline? I don't remember it being in the outline. I think it was thought of on set. It might have been. So it wasn't I, something they improvised. No, it was something I, that was. It could, no, it could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I have to yeah. go back and look at the outline. Yeah. But I think it's really funny, them wrestling. Yeah. But when she goes to kiss him and she's overwhelmed with passion. Yeah. Hilarious. I don't, it took my, it's just so funny. I don't know what to well, say. Well, also because there's such, you know, that's the reality of the eroticism of anger. We've all been in with our partners and had huge fights and then you have sex right well, after yeah, make that. Well, you makeup sex, sure. Yeah. But I also remember when I was, this is younger, you know, I'm talking about high school, college. I'm not even talking about makeup sex. No, I'm no, talking no. about hot, erotic sex when you're angry right, with listen, your partner. One of the things I, I'm not comfortable with you is using the terms hot and erotic. <laughs> I don't look to you for that. You're like my sister. Please don't say hot erotic anymore around me. But by the way, when I was younger, I used to be really attracted to women I couldn't stand. And I would yeah. gladly, no matter how much hatred I had, I would have loved to have had sex yeah, with Yeah, well, that's what that but was. But that goes away for me. That really went away when I got well, older. Well, that was youth. That was yeah. youth. Ah, yeah. youth. Yeah. So uh, they start making out, and that, that was hilarious. Then uh, he goes to the doctor's office, and he parks on the street because he sees Joanna, and he just knows he's got to park on the street. He can't even deal with that. But he doesn't have any money for the meter. That was pre when we could do with our credit cards. Right. So I want to say something here, which is amazing. You, this is a great lesson in comedy. So I watch that, and I think, and I haven't seen it in years, oh, we know, I wrote down, we know he's going to get a ticket. Not Larry David. Larry David is approaching people. The only one I would have cut out, it was the last guy who walked by, who, like, Larry almost said, would you eat this pile of shit? That's the way the guy reacted. Yeah. And he's uh, asking for change. Yeah. But the beauty and the punch is his lawyer, Nia Vardalos, watching him deal Doing, with asking yeah. for money. Yeah. And she just doesn't say a word. Yeah. Her look is perfect. And her look, by the way, when she was in the car behind him, you know, that's a lot of acting to, to hold back and make a look say a thousand words. But see, that, that's the point I made when I said a lesson in comedy. You think he's going to get a ticket. That's what everybody thought. I thought it when I watched it. No, no, no. Larry's got bigger plans, and it's all about a conference. Him looking stupid in front of his lawyer. In front of the lawyer. For that reason is what it built up to. Didn't expect it. 
So then he goes. To I'm the- sorry, by the way, for anyone listening. If you feel I'm condescending by by, by saying a lesson in comedy, uh, condescending not to me. No, no, no. But oh, I'm to saying them? to them, oh. I have great respect for our listeners, and I never want to go. I never want to be Mr. Know It All in comedy. So then Larry shows up. Vanessa. By uh, the way, I'm Mr. No Sum. Vanessa, what I, is? I, I'm Mr. No Sum in comedy. I'm not Know It All. I'm No Sum. No Sum. <laughs> okay. Well, he shows up, goes to the doctor, and. Uh, Marissa won't hold. She will not hold the elevator. And Larry runs up the stairs Which to try to beat beauty. her. And then again, there's a, a fight in the hallway and well, an no, altercation. This is, this is like magical in the hallway, this fighting. Yeah. Are the physical fights written into the outline or improvised during the shoot? For the most part, they're written they're into written the out- in. outline. Yeah. Not exactly how they're played out, but it's written well, that they have a physical. Well, exactly how it's played out because the yeah. show's improvised. Right. But that's what Larry David wanted. He 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 enjoys a physical fight. I've had yeah. several with him. Yes, you that have. That have been really fun. Yeah. So Larry yeah. wins in the hallway. Yeah. Uh, but he can't write his name again. <laughs> These are the kinds of things that make me laugh when he can't write his name again because of his finger. And then again, he talks to the other patients. But Marissa goes in first because they changed the policy. Yep. And because so, Larry requested the policy to be yeah, changed, yeah. so he gets fucked again. Bite him in the ass. And by the way, that's a thing that people can associate with. You complain about something, they change it, and somehow it fucks you. And then Lisa Ann Walter says the whole policy should be about you first. <laughs> which is, which but I Lisa thought was Ann so funny. Walter, the mispronunciation of Larry's name. Lassie Maxson, I think yeah. she said. Lassie but the first Maxson, one Mr. Was, legit, was legit because of his handwriting. Yeah. The second one, she knew who it was, yeah. and yeah. she fucked with it. That's why she has a smile when she walks to the counter afterwards. So it turns out that he goes to the doctor. The doctor tells him he has a fracture, but he won't do anything until Larry pays his wife the $1,500 he owes her and pays the doctor his fee up front. And Jack, the way he asked for that and did it, you kind of didn't blame him. You know, he's sticking up for his wife and... He's talking about his. I, I love that. And I love, again, I love that performance. He's very understated, Jack, which he's, is what yeah, makes him so terrific I know, in this. He's, he's really wonderful. But my favorite thing is when he takes the card, he looks at Larry and says, Gonna get Miles. He looks at the yeah, card. Right, I oh, know. you're gonna get yeah. Miles. See, and now that's an improvised kind of a yeah, thing yeah. that you, it would never be written in. And no. it's just one of those things that just. Oh, it's beautiful in the way he says texture. it. Yeah. And I believe that's where the episode ends. It does. Yeah, so and we'll done. be back next time. Yeah, and uh, thank you all for listening. 